This is a quick video on how I do my handles. They're all done with a handheld extruder. Um, I do a D shape handle like that because I find that's the most comfortable. Um, started off with a plate that I just made myself, two holes connected to make a rounded rectangle handle shape. And then after a while of using that, which you know, perfectly adequate. Uh, I decided to do it properly and I got a company to cut me same basic shape but laser cut from acrylic and then there's what I've started doing is I, I made a set for myself but now I'm selling them there's three versions of that in different sizes um, depending on the size of the mug you're putting it on and then some more ornamental ones that look like that well, one of them looks like that I don't have a fired example to hand, but obviously it creates channels for the glazes to run. So you'll get more interesting glaze effects. Um, but they're a bit harder to attach without squashing, so everything's got its ups and downsides. So I am doing, for medium mugs like that, that's a medium... Well, that's probably a large mug. No, that's a large mug, but that's the middle size of the three for the handle. Which is a nice chunky ish handle. Uh, I only put the massive size on things like teapots and occasionally giant mugs. I got clay slightly wedged because it does come out better, but you don't need to, it doesn't have to be perfect. But the main thing is to get it into the extruder with as few air bubbles as possible because after a little while you'll start getting bubbles in the extruded handle and um, they're very difficult to correct. But what I do is I strew the length of clay, taking as much care as possible not to bend it sideways. You can bend it round like that, but if you twist it, they will warp later. Lay it out flat. And for medium mugs, I do ten and a half centimetres. You can see there, that one's got a little bit air bubbly, but not so bad that it can't be used. you just got to smooth it as you go. So cut them out. And then I use the same tool that I use for the peacock eye which is a, a rotary grinding bit and again being careful to make sure you only bend them lengthways I stamp a flat section so that the end flares like that so you get a better join it's more comfortable and then bend it around my finger do the same at the other end so you've got two flared ends and a handle shaped handle and then set that aside and what I'll do is I'll make these about an hour and a half before they're needed less on a warm day more on a cold day in winter it can take a few hours for them to dry enough to attach but they need to reach the same level of dryness as the bodies are which have been drying overnight um, I trim the the entire body, so the body's finished before I attach the handle. Just because it's so much easier to trim a pot when it doesn't have a handle attached, and so easy to catch a handle when you're trimming something with a lump of clay sticking out of it. And then these will just be attached by scoring and slipping the body. I use um one of the hedgehog ribs, which is very useful if you just put a ruler on the side of it and so you can check these will be about six centimetres apart, you mark the top, check where six uh, centimetres is down and mark the bottom, then you slip made of the same clay that the handle and body are made of um, in both sides of the join firmly attach it and then 
lets it set up for a few minutes again depends how dry the pieces are and how hot the weather is how long it takes and then i use um these silicon shaping tools smooth out and round off the joins uh, and it should all be neat and very permanently attached and then you've got a handle simple as that mm -hmm.